Hello there. Hi. I'm standing up this time for a change. Yeah, I wasn't really sure what to do a video about, other than to say, I've been listening to quite a few things today and watching events unfolding in London. I haven't checked it um, in the last hour or two, but uh, that event where everybody met up and... Um, uh, you know, the un Unite the uh, Kingdom event, and um, that seemed to go well. I haven't really seen if there's anything else has happened in the recent hours, but um, hopefully it's all peaceful. And I was just thinking, watching that, there was a bit at the end, I was watching a live feed, and there was these two dancers came on, and some people in the chat were, the chat box, you know, were being a bit dismissive of it, but I thought it was... It was sweet, there was a sweetness to it and a kind of an innocence to this. And another thing I noticed and thought was the, um, which was there at the, the meeting they had a few months ago in London, the event, there's that uh, there's an element of um, Christianity to it and or, or faith and the idea that uh, we're linked to older stories and the, the sense of faith and the sense of something to bind us. Um, and even though it was talking specifically, there was a band and they were doing some good songs. I like some of that Christian music. <laughs> I'm kind of agnostic myself, I suppose, if I have to say anything at all. Even that term, I'm not even sure about. I'm just sort of a, I don't know, really. I don't know what the truth is, but I like to see that element there. And I think it, I think it just shows a sort of um, thirst or a, I don't know if a thirst is the right word, or a kind of a need or... A desire for something that a lot of people feel is being um, has been removed or is at threat of being removed from our lives the meaning of it and we just can't get it all we can't get all that you know that soulful stuff from uh, consumer goods or computers or te technology certainly it just won't supply it you know and it can't supply it because those things are can be useful, can be uh, quite tricksy and um, novelty and enjoyable, entertaining in a short term, but there's something deeper that the human spirit, that the spirit uh, hungers for or, or desires or needs, like a, like a plant or a tree needs certain nutrients, and it's one of the nutrients that we need. And so it was good to see that element coming through again in that event. Um, I put some links on a little note thing to do with this channel about in relation to Lucy Letby and there's some, I think there's some really good links there of articles. Uh, I've just been watching or listening as I was lying down to a video that a friend sent me and it's an astrological um, sort of uh, exploration or an astrological uh, discussion of, about using the charts of the different people involved, the main people involved in uh, the American election. And it's done by Meg Moonbeam. And I'm really enjoying it. I was just lying there and it was making a lot of sense. Uh, but fundamentally, the, one of the things I really liked was this idea that she's talking about America, of course, and she's saying that, you know, going back to 1776, when America was founded as an independent country then, um, independence time. Um, it was in the time of Pluto. I, I don't know much about astrology, but it was a kind of a Pluto, main major Pluto element coming around. And it comes around every once every 240 odd years or so. And we're still in this, we're in this position now of this return of Pluto, a Pluto return period. And the Pluto is signifying like a death and a rebirth. So that, in short, she's kind of saying we're on the, on the cusp of this death and rebirth and allying it to a lot of the other issues that have been going on in the world. And what some people have felt are, you know, a certain echelon or group of people in the world wanting to control everybody else and uh, very dark, uh, very essentially representing a very dark force uh, that, that they're I won't, I won't spoil it in case you want to listen to it I'll put a link down below for the um, and thank you to, to Mano for sending me the uh, 
the link to Meg Moonbeam, who I'd never, I hadn't listened to her before. But um, I'm talking with my friend as well. We were talking about some things on the messenger and um, um, my other friend. And um, it's the idea that maybe this is, there can be periods when you can be a bit quiet as well and pull back a bit and just wait a bit and don't have to be talking all the time, even though I'm rabbiting on now. And that things things are working nonetheless, things are working through, either we're getting help and advice from places beyond, from um, a knowledge source beyond our ken in a way, or beyond our usual daily range of thinking that we're being, you know, whether we're imbibing it in some way or we're downloading it to use a computer term and it's happening to us and but to trust that, to trust that we're being made ready and and in light of the case of Lucy Letby and um is that it is it is all going to be put right. Restoration of order is coming there, the truth is coming out, and it's galvanized a lot of people, very disparate people from very disparate backgrounds and very disparate concerns usually or way of presenting themselves in the world and it's pulled them together in this common sense of there's outrage there there's upset and there's but there's a sense of this back to that spiritual need idea the idea for for justice for truth for rightness to to be supreme and to be respected and 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 obviously their opposites not to be knocked off the pedestal, the idea of lies and fraud and um, injustice to be to be removed, to be overturned, and I think that I, I know that's coming. I know it's coming for Lucy Lep, but I just hope it's as we all do, as soon as possible and sooner rather than later. And as many people have expressed over the last since I started interacting with people about this about fifteen months ago or something like that. Is that Lucy? You know, if if she does want a family, these are her years that you know she would be wanting to certainly think about starting one. And so, well, to, you know, to cut to the chase, they they mustn't keep her in prison. And any they should they should release her today. Of course, they've already stolen enough of her life, and they mustn't steal the years in which that she. And still that opportunity for her to, to have a family as well, it sh- should she so want one. You know, that's the thing that people recognise as being very important. Well, it's vital to someone's life if, if they want that, you know. And um, so that's another consideration. But I think it is going to be... Well, I know it's going to be put right. It is going to be put right. Just... Um, yeah, I, I did the links on a note, didn't I? And um, I don't know if you saw that, but there was a link to the uh, the Court of Appeal uh, justification. I mean, that whole system needs basically um, dismantling and a lot of the people involved in it have to be removed, if not the vast majority of them, I think. They're not, they're not fit for... Anyway, I'm not going to... I don't want to go on and angry or upset rant I do, I do that enough and I just think it's going to be put right and we don't all have to be in a heightened state of um, we don't have to be in a heightened state of high dudgeon all the time and in fact I think there's somebody what a, a chap I know on Twitter said as well you know to think clearly if we're thinking we're in this height, heightened emotion state. Sometimes the clarity can go, and and there are many, there are many, many approaches to this. And you've got this organisation on uh, called the Nineteen Nurses, because it started with nineteen nurses signing that letter. That's apparently gone to, I won't use the name. I don't like the name, but it's gone to the office of the Prime Minister. Put it that way, and um, so there's all these different approaches happening. And there's more people joining that group. So if you're on Twitter, there's a a Twitter uh, account called 19 Nurses. So that's the letter that they've signed 
in terms of uh, the Lucy Letby um, miscarriage of justice and their concerns. But somebody was men a few people have mentioned that um, there was a bit of legal that they think there may have been a bit of legalistic strategizing in terms of the grounds that they brought for this recent leave to appeal in terms of the baby K attempted murder case that they deliberately didn't go for anything on the medical side in order to, the phrase that occurs to me is in order to keep their powder dry as it were and not, not take anything from what's building up obviously as part of the CCRC application for, for all the, all the convictions. And that kind of makes sense if that's true. And I don't, this, it's such a ornate and tricksy and duplicitous kind of system, that legal system that there might be traps involved there that if you, if you bring a certain thing for this leave to appeal, you can't bring it for the CCRC because it, it's been designed by people whose uh, whose interests are, are not in truth and not in justice, but in protecting the system and ratifying the system's decisions and protecting it from embarrassment as they see it, that they would rather it not be embarrassed than somebody innocent and, and, and have somebody innocent in prison for life. And, and that's the mindset of many of the people involved in it. Um, as we've seen from, you know, previous statements by people that are, were highly thought of in that system. That's exactly, that's literally what they were saying, that we've got to protect the system and let innocent people be in prison. They've, they, you know, we're talking about Lord Denning, you know, but obviously that's a, a mindset that's just as current today and, and probably runs through the majority of the people that are high operatives in that system. I don't think of them in any, with any respect at all. And I don't think... I think they're there to, for first and foremost, serve themselves and and serve the, the establishment and, and serve the system and not allow the system to be weakened as they see it by uh, being challenged and uh, the ordinary people aren't meant to aren't meant to challenge it, are they? But um, but something else is at work here, and uh, I'm going to listen to a bit more Meg Moonbeam. Which is really good. I'll put I'll put the link down below. And um, I started listening to the Joe Rogan, um, Joe Joe Rogan Donald Trump um, interview, and I'm finding that really interesting as well. I'm going to watch it in bits. It's about three hours, and I'm, I just think he's he's a very um, interesting guy. The way he's talking, talking about historical things like that, and I find him and have found him and. Much, far more human than, well, he's in a he's, he's, he's different, completely different kind of energy and entity that someone like, I don't know, um, the Clintons, you know, either of them, Biden or Kamala Harris, those people are something else. I don't know what they are. I don't think of them as, well, I won't, I keep being pulled into darkness there. I don't want to go into that darkness but I'm enjoying listening to this uh, interview with um, Joe Rogan and Donald Trump. I'll carry on listening to that. It's a very strange world we're in, at, I say at the moment, but it's probably always been, isn't it? But I think there's definitely... There's forces, as it were, work, working for restoration of order, and they are building... And it might seem at some times that there's constant setbacks, but there's another track, another line going, moving, moving along, and things are working out on that line as well. It's that whole <coughs> mysterious ways concept. I hope so, anyway, and I, I do want to believe that. Anyway, I'll leave it there. <coughs> and if you want to check out some... Um, excuse me. Any of those links I put, I put it on a note. It says community thing, and I put it on a note. That I put about six or seven links to articles. And there's also the, uh, I think I put a, a little PS on it about the, uh, there's part seven on Private Eye by Dr. Phil Hammond. Um, there's that to look at as well. And the, um, 
the interview with the, the Dan Wotton did with uh, Professor Fenton and Dr. McLachlan. So there's all those links there, and uh, hope you might um, consider looking <coughs> consider looking at some of those. <coughs> oh dear, gonna need a glass of water or something. But take care. Uh, I think the clocks, well in UK anyway, clocks go back. I think they go back tonight, don't they? Something like that. This, that's another weird thing, isn't it? Um, clocks going back and forwards. Take care. Have a good evening and weekend and Sunday and everything like that. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now.